Hello everyone and welcome to this painting video with myself John. In this one we're going to be tackling the UH-1 Huey for the West German faction for World War III Team Yankee. Now Hueys are an iconic helicopter, they've been used all across the world, most famously in the Vietnam War as well, but um, in this one we're going World War III and we're going West Germans. So again as always I like to stress at the start of these that we're painting this just to get it on the table. We're doing a few steps, I cut, there's an airbrush step in there as well, but most of it is just hand painting, washes and varnishes. Nothing uh, too complex. So hopefully at the end of it you'll see a miniature you'd be happy to put on the table yourself or have a go at. So without further ado, let's get stuck in. So to begin with our Huey, we're going to be looking at the, the priming stage first. And as you can see here, that's already been done. So the process was uh, Citadel Chaos Black was sprayed all over the miniature, as you can see underneath here. And from a top down uh, position, I used uh, some Citadel Wraith Bone just to, to bring up a sort of a brighter color. And that still leaves a little bit of dark in some of the shadows, uh, particularly in the internals and stuff like that. Again. It's kind of, you know, six of one, half a dozen of the other uh, to whether or not you feel it's worth doing that or not. However, if I was going to prime it all one colour or just base coat it all one colour, I would actually go with um, Citadel Grace here. But I wanted to try the, the pre-shade out just to see if it made much of a difference. So, on to our first colour. And we're going to be airbrushing our first colour down, which is MIG uh, Acrylic Colour. This is um, the NATO green, and it's a good green, good solid green, and uh, we're going to be airbrushing this through my uh, Green Stuff World airbrush, which is thinned approximately 2 to 1. So, there, well, there's more paint than thinner, it's 2 to 1 that way. I Ratios aren't my thing. <laughs> so we have that in the airbrush, and uh, we're just going to give the whole uh, fuselage and, and cockpit a, a couple of coats of this. Make sure the airbrush is working correctly. And away we go. And with the NATO green down, we're going to have to let this dry for a while because of the uh, the level of thinner and how thin this paint already was before application. So we're going to chill out for a while, let that dry, and when we come back, we'll look at our next colour. So the next thing we're going to be doing is adding a bit of camouflage and the camouflage I'm going to go with is just a simple almost black. It's a really dark grey, not a black. So the colour I'm using for that is Citadel Air Corvus Black. This looks really good as a black substitute for camouflage on vehicles because it allows it to not just be a pure black which can be a bit um, difficult to work with afterwards. But this will allow us to have a nice two-tone camouflage going on and then after that, we're going to be using a couple other different colors. We will actually go a proper black, and we're going to be doing that on the nose as well, but we'll get to that in a minute. So we need to switch the airbrush back on. Again, uh, thinned roughly the same as the, uh, the NATO green, so I need to make sure it's working properly. Seems a little too thin, but... We'll work with it and see what happens. So again, nothing too complicated here. Just a, a couple of a few stripes of the the uh, Corvus black, just to give us a bit of camouflage, make it a bit more visually interesting. Now we're going to let this dry, and then after that, we're going to start with um, we're going to continue on with our, our painting. But it's going to be all traditional paint from here on in. We've we've done our airbrush steps now, as good or as bad as they may turn out in the end. That's the end of the airbrushing step. So with our camouflage now done we can have a quick look around uh, the Huey and see what we think. So it's a little rough in places. You might have noticed the, the airbrush wasn't completely playing ball with me. That's probably my fault. I should have been uh, tidying it a bit better or cleaning it a bit better. So anyway, now that we have that down, we're going to move on to an actual black. So we're for this, we're going to be using uh, scale color decay black. I know it's a little um, 
It's a little edgy <laughs> for using on something like this, but we're going to be using this and we're going to be painting on the nose. So let me get a little bit out onto the palette here. I just got this paint through the post, so I wanted to, I have a good excuse to try it out. So what we're going to be doing is using this on the nose because a lot of these Hueys have this sort of black, this sort of matte black nose. And I wanted to use an actual black for this so that it differentiated between it and the camouflage. Um, makes it a bit more interesting looking. So I'm going to do all of this kind of area. That is a nice black paint too. That is very smooth. I quite like that. So anything we go over again, we know we still just need to, you know, if we do any mistakes, we can just take that NATO green out again and just return to it. I think we're going to draw the line across here. I'm not sure if the whole nose should be black or not. Um, that to me looks right, so we're going to stick with that. That looks pretty good to me, and you can see the the differentiation or the difference between an actual matte black and the the Corvus black, and it it just makes it a bit more interesting to look at. So I'm going to go around the the helicopter and see if there's anything else I want to do in that color, and then when we come back, we'll see what our next step is. With the matte black down, we can quickly go over what uh, areas we've done. So we did a couple more layers on the nose. We also painted the boots and the machine gun, and we painted one. Uh, visor on our gunner here, our door gunner, because he's he's there and he's got the, the shield down over his face. Also did a little bit on the inside where the rotor blades uh, magnetize in and the exhaust vent for the engine as well as the tail rotor. So that should be enough uh, of those details. The What we're going to move on to now is a little bit of skin because there's a touch of skin on these guys and for that we're going to be using Vallejo's Heavy Skin Tone great paint, uh, works a lot like the old Citadel foundations, heavy pigmentation, very easy to use, uh, basically a one coat, uh, a one coat deal, which is great. And uh, on our crew, we've got one completely bare face, and we're going to make sure we get that. Take a little bit of paint off my brush because it's a bit too heavy. And then we'll just do his hands and there's a little bit of skin on the other door gunner there's like the, the bottom of his, his face we'll make sure we get in I also want to be careful not to hit too much detail around him because I don't want to be doing a lot of extra work on top of him because he's kind of wearing uh, like that a big sort of one piece suit um, and I understand that, you know, technically he's an American door gunner. He's got an M60 rather than an MG3, which is what the, the stack card for the, the aircraft has. I'm sure anyone that feels like converting that to an MG3 uh, would definitely get away with it and it would look a little tidier. But this is what we have to work with and this is what we've got. So just as long as we don't overdo it too much and we still get, you know, enough there. To say, yeah, that's definitely a person there. So <laughs> we've got that. Uh, next, then, I'm going to take some Army Painter spaceship exterior. And for this, it's going to be used on our tail rotor here. Because our tail rotor has um, white and red stripe on it. But in this case, what I'm going to do is use the spaceship exterior as the white. Because it's a light enough grey to, to get away with. And it gives us a good base for putting the red stripes on afterwards. So make sure we get some of that onto the brush. And then on the tail rotor, we're looking to just take a little bit, probably about that much there, and just take that to the end of the, of the blade. And we'll need to give this a couple of coats just to make sure that it's nice and smooth and it's a, a nice even coat. The uh, main rotor will also get uh, the same, uh, let me just bring the main rotor in, it'll get the same work done to it. There will be 
uh, a base layer of the spaceship exterior or possibly even uh, grey sear and then we'll be putting a yellow tip onto the main rotor so that that will be sorted out as well um, but we'll keep that to the side for now so with that now done we're going to move on to a little bit of a dry brushing step uh, kind of the only weathering we're really going to do to the helicopter and this is going to be using uh, Necron Compound which is our, our dry paint now this one in particular got a little too dry so what I've done is added a little bit of um, acrylic uh, airbrush thinner just a couple of drops into the bottle and it's mostly brought it back to life in a way that we can use so what we're planning to do with this uh, if I can make sure that it's it's done correctly I need to remove some of it on my skin there just to see the sort of consistency I'm getting I'm happy enough with that we're gonna just lightly touch in the engine exhaust not too much and then on the two machine guns as well just give them a light touch of that and we can give them a little bit of a wash later on and then on the rest of the helicopter I want to um, add it as little bits of chipping so on door edges edges of the floor there and what I want to do is just add a little bit like a little wear and tear to the helicopter not too much but a little bit here and there and it just adds a little bit more visual interest it takes away from the the very clean look that the Huey currently has now, a lot of these things usually are very well maintained but I would argue that you know, if you're playing a World War III scenario, if you're playing a World War III game, things aren't going to be as well maintained, and you're going to find more of that World War II aesthetic sort of coming back, the sort of make do, mend and make do, you know, use whatever is around you, use whatever you can, especially if supplies are getting low and that sort of thing. So you gotta, with your World War III stuff, I would argue that you can go as mad as you want on the weathering steps, you know, depending if you're thinking, you know, is it going to be the war has just started or is is the war sort of a, a protracted engagement or conflict and it's been going on a while, you know, this stuff wouldn't look as clean as it always or as it usually does, you know, particularly if you see a, a Huey at an air show or something like that, you know, these things generally always look quite tidy, but, you know, would that stand up? If a war broke out, I, I don't think it would. That's that's my argument anyway, and I'm, I'm sticking to it. So, <laughs> like I said, not too much weathering here. Just enough to give us that little touch of visual interest. And uh, I think that that should work just fine for all it is. Uh, rotors and stuff like that are generally a, a composite material. They're not generally uh, a stressed metal or anything like that. I don't know what the Huey is. I know more modern stuff is definitely more of a, a mixture of materials that aren't necessarily metallic. So I'm happy to leave them like that. The The other thing that we want to, the other part we want to hit with a bit of the, the dry brush is the, the main rotor but I will be doing that off camera as well, just to have it sorted off in the background. So letting that settle, let all the skin stuff dry and we'll let the uh, the spaceship exterior on the tail rotor dry, I'll sort the main rotor off camera. And then once that's done, we're gonna come back in and start doing a little bit of panel lining and a little bit of work on uh, our two door gunners. So everything's dry. Uh, you can see the rotors, I've put the main rotor back on, and you can see that it's just chaos black with that little bit of dry brushing in the center uh, around the, the gear and the two stripes of spaceship exterior, which are ready for uh, the yellow later on. Now, we're just going to take the main rotor off again, hopefully, uh, without it taking the magnet with it, because the magnets are, are quite strong. Oh good, it did come off, that's fine. <laughs> it did glue it down properly. Uh, right. 
we're going to start on the glass uh, around the canopy and uh, we're going to start with the um, the two top pieces. These are like a, a green tinted one. They're like, you know, to stop glare from the sunlight or, or anything like that. And they have a, a very distinctive greenish look to them. So for this, we're not going to base coat it in anything. We're just going to give it a layer of um, Green Stuff Intensity Ink, uh, Verdis, Verdis Green, Verdis Green. It's kind of a deep, uh, like a blacky aqua green and uh, it, it'll work really well for this, I hope. Uh, particularly over the green base coat, it'll just make that stand out a little bit more. So with the ink, we're just going to start applying it uh, to the, the canopy, or to the top parts anyway. And we're gone a little heavy there, so we'll take some off and start to move it around because we want to make sure we get it into the areas that we want without going over the edge. So that's the green. We're then going to move on to the, the actual glass of the canopies and the doors. And for that, we're going to be using Vallejo Panzer Aces Periscope. Now, I will warn you, there is going to be a matte varnish step on top of all this. And then what we're going to do for the, the glass is go back over that with a gloss varnish at the end. This is just to get the colors down so we're not worried about retaining any sort of gloss here. What we're trying to do is get something that um, looks the part and once it's in and glossed up afterwards it's you know it really stands out as the that sort of glassy material so it's probably something like Perspax in reality. So with all the glass details done, uh, we can see around the front, you know, it's quite a solid colour, but what I've decided to do on the back, on the two doors, is because the doors are pretty much looking straight onto a known colour, so I have an olive drab, or, you know, the NATO green, or something like that. What I've done was gone a lot thinner with those, so that they actually look a little more transparent. So even when we put the gloss varnish down, you're still going to get that background colour kind of showing through that sort of uh, NATO green. Now... Onto our crew, our two door gunners, and we're going to do a very simple step here, and we're just going to give them uh, a coat of Agrax Earthshade, and then after that we'll uh, move on to some panel lining and uh, a couple of, well, you know, one other step as well. So, just going to be a case of giving these guys this wash, that way they stand out a little bit from the, uh, the colouring of the helicopter itself and it gives them a little bit of shading without needing to do too much uh, extra work. Now, of course, you can leave it at this stage and it'll be they'll be fine. You can also go in and re-highlight them or, or something like that later on, but for the sake of being able to achieve something relatively quickly, just the wash will do for now. So same on the other side. We're going to move on uh, to another wash. We're going to be using Null Oil. And this is going to go uh, onto the guns to um, just calm down the, uh, the dry brushing a little bit that we've done on them previously. So you can go as heavy or as light, as light as you want on these two guns. I find a little bit of a heavier wash helps accentuate the dry brushing a little bit and brings it out more in the areas you want it to uh, particularly in this case because the dry brush was a little not dry it was it was a bit more damp than usual because i had to try and bring that paint back to life so there was a couple of drops of thinner in it but that's all it really needs to do now the next thing that we want for the uh the null oil is panel lining so we're going to go in now and go over each panel line with the, the uh, null oil and pick out all these recessed details and this is what's really going to show the helicopter in its in its best light we're also going to go around the inner edges of each of the windows and what that's going to do for us is add a little bit of depth to the glass So with all the panel lining and window lining done, 
uh, I went ahead off camera and I painted in the red stripes on the tail rotor. That was just using uh, Citadel Mephiston Red, so nothing too, too precise there, nothing to worry about. Uh, on the main rotor, if I just lift it into camera here, uh, I've done the yellow stripe on each end and given the uh, middle part a bit of the black wash as well, the null oil layer too. So the yellow is Phoenix Flames from Army Painter and uh, yep, the rest of it's just as it was. So at this stage, we're ready to uh, matte varnish uh, our helicopter, our, our Huey. And for that, we're going to be going with our ultra matte varnish from AK Interactive. So always remember to give this stuff a bit of a shake because it, it tends to have form a sediment at the bottom. So make sure you give it a good shake and uh, then we'll put some out onto our palette. Like that. And then it's just a case of we can brush it on or you can airbrush it on. It, it works either way and it works really well either way. So uh, for this instance, I'm just going to be brushing it on um, and just taking a larger brush and just applying it uh, all over the model. So this will settle everything down. And you can see before I do this window, what I've done with the null oil is applied it in a little bit of a, a sweep here just to make it look a bit more interesting. Um, apart from that, everything else is just lined uh, normally. You can see the depth that it adds to, uh, particularly the green windows as well. It just gives a little bit more shading, a little bit more interest to those areas. So we're just going to give the whole thing the matte varnish. And then after that, we can start picking out the areas that we want to be glossed again. With our ultra matte coat now down, we can have a look at how everything has turned out so far. And that, to me, is looking pretty solid. I like this um, this really serious matte finish that we get. And it works so well for military color schemes because it just brings everything right down. It really drabs everything out. And um, it's now gonna allow us to really make something punchy here by putting some gloss varnish over our, our, um, our perspex and our glass. So for that, we're gonna be using uh, Citadel's Ard Coat, which is their gloss varnish. Give it a little bit of a shake. And uh, this is just going to be a case of going around all of the canopies. I'll put some onto my palette here. Going around all of the glass and just carefully painting in each section of it. And what we'll get in the end is something that should stand out really nicely and give us a really fun looking finish. And of course, as always guys, this, you know, if you want to do more after this, or if there's steps that you would personally take in painting something like this, absolutely go for it because we're always aiming just to get something on the table here. We're not um, going nuts here. So just a case of glossing all this stuff in, and then once that's done, I'm going to uh, spray the flying stand black because I have I used it during the airbrush stages and it's a bit grotty now. I'm not a fan, personally, I'm not a fan of clear flight stands. They tend to, when they've been out in the sun for a while or they're, they're getting a bit old, they tend to get a little fragile. And I'm not sure they still do that when they've had a coat of paint on them, you know, that sort of like protection of, you know, a bit of UV protection, I think um, increases their longevity a little bit. So... Yeah, I, I generally tend to paint the, the flying bases in. So here is our Huey finally finished uh, with the gloss varnish down, the base is painted black, and um, we'll just have a, a quick little swizz around just to show you how the, the gloss has turned out. It's it's quite nice, it looks really good. I like the, um, the green on the top of the canopy, I like that uh, darker green look. Um, it's still, you know, like I said before, playing with different colors, different um, sort of textures and material really does go to making something that's military, which should be quite drab and, and kind of boring looking, just makes it pop a little bit more. So we have the green glass up here on the top that has the gloss. We have the, the sort of very dark gray as the camouflage, but then we also have this, you know, darker, like proper black uh, on the nose. And with all the panel lining, and minimal uh, sort of weathering with just that little bit of chipping effect. 
we've got ourselves quite a charming looking uh, UH-1 for our West Germans. So as always guys, you can always take these miniatures further. If you feel like there's something you would prefer to do, absolutely go ahead and do it. Remember this is just to get it down on the table and I think if you set this down on the table along with a couple of others and the rest of your West German force, I think it's going to look pretty good. So thank you very much for watching. Take care, stay safe, and I will see you again very soon.